welcome. In this video today, we're going to be discussing your business operation as well as your personal finances for those who have fluctuating income. So we're going to be dealing with velocity banking, fluctuating income, how you really operate when you are either doing the velocity banking concept to pay off debt or you're doing the velocity banking concept to create cash flow by leveraging debt or you're simply using velocity banking to do credit card churning, offsetting expenses in your personal and business. You're running your business operations. You're bringing in revenue, but the revenue is fluctuating. So it's very hard for you to get a read on exactly what your four major numbers are, right? And how you should be chunking or proceeding when you're investing, when you're saving, when you're tithing, when you're giving, how you kind of bring this all together, right? Velocity banking can be quite simple and effective when you have a steady income stream but for some of us and luckily your very own personal finance geek has fluctuating income and over the last three to four years i've developed a blueprint that i'm going to reveal to you in this video here that will address the very those of you who have fluctuating income you have a salary plus commission or you your salary or I should say you're hourly and you do overtime, right? Or you have a job and a business. The business makes fluctuating revenues, but your job is steady. What we're going to be looking at is kind of like some fundamental firewalls and protections that I have in place for my fluctuating income. I'll re reveal to you some rules and principles that I abide by, that I obey no matter what happens. And this allows me to determine how I can move forward each and every year as I project roughly or try to estimate how much money I'm going to make, right? There's no telling how little or how much I can make in a year because of the nature of my business. It's fluctuating. It's based off sales, based off revenue, based off leads, generation, things like that. That's how most businesses are run. There's, there's no guarantee that you're going to make the same money you made last year. What you can have a guaranteed read on is your expenses, your bills, you can adjust. So we want to look at your guaranteed bills, your non guaranteed bills. And then what I like to do is I will incorporate buffers, flexible, miscellaneous categories into my overall expenses. I overestimate my expenses, I create all this buffer, all these firewalls in place so that I'm able to, again, so I can proceed effectively and not run into an issue where I'm making a ton of money and I'm living below my means. I have a lot of cash flow, but then what happens you, is you start to allocate the cash flow to investments, to risk opportunities that can make you a ton of money. You start losing money. It doesn't necessarily hurt you because you can just go and make a ton more, right? But eventually it starts to catch up after so many years. You're like, wait a minute, am I going back to making a ton of money and spending a ton of money? Am I not accounting for the money that I traditionally invest, traditionally save, traditionally give? And then am I giving above, not realizing it? Am I saving above, not realizing? It? Am I investing above, losing investments? And then I have a bad year and I try to keep those traditional saving, investing and tithing numbers. And then you find yourself either in a tight position where you're like, huh, I didn't get to invest as much as I wanted this year, or I didn't get to save as much as I wanted this year. But my bills have been the same. Roughly, I haven't really added on too much stuff. And then you just start to lose uh, control. You don't start to see where every dollar goes. So you forget. I've done this personally because I know how to live off 20, 30, 40 grand a year. So to then give me a quarter million, 300, 400, 500,000 a year, is nothing to me. But you still must run the numbers because what starts to creep up on you is taxes, inflation, and devaluation of the currency that we're using. Those three things start to creep up. You're not accounting for that in your expenses and that's what's hurting you. And then the fact that you had a good three, four years of nothing but up and then maybe you have one bad year a down year right or maybe you make 500 grand maybe you make a million and the next year you make 750,000 that's 250,000 dollars less
but really your total output expenses everything is only 400,000 so you're still cash flowing a lot of money but what's what you are doing and I've done this what you're doing often is you're taking that cash flow and you're reinvesting it and locking it up potentially making yourself illiquid and then you don't make what you wanted to make that following year and you find yourself tight on expenses somehow some way so we're going to address the blueprint that I have for myself over the last three, four years now being in business, rules that I abide by, things that I obey. I get these averages in place. I know my numbers. I continue to know my numbers because these are your numbers. You have to live with it, right? So do not become prideful. Do not become lazy just because you're making millions or hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? That is can bite you in the you know what. So with that being said, let's take a look at the board. The numbers that I'm showing you on the board here are my figures, real authentic numbers that I'm dealing with. What you need to be able to do is pull the fundamental principles and you replace the numbers with your numbers and you will be set. You will have a framework, at least a framework. That's what we're trying to create here is a framework on how we do the velocity banking concept, infinite banking, kingdom authority, 10x in your income, leveraging, etc., etc. You come back to the framework, it's going to help you proceed, right? We're going to go over some things that you may not have really considered into your finances and we're going to address that here. So with that being said, let's start with the four major numbers. This is my average performance over the last 3 years. I average 29,000 $972.22 a month. I average $15,772 in expenses per month, everything, with a net cash flow of $14,200, zero dollars of debt. In reality, you're not spending $15,772 each and every month. I'm not making $29,972.22 each and every month. The reality is I'll have a 50K month, a 70K month, a 20K month, a 10K month. The reality is I'm not spending 15 grand a month. I'm spending maybe 50,000 in one month, maybe 30,000, maybe 60,000, maybe 10, maybe 15. So what I look at is the, the, the net guaranteed stuff that I know goes out each and every month so that I know there's always money there to cover that. And then you have those major annual expenses like taxes, your investments, your savings, your tithings. What I'll do is I'll take those big numbers. I spread it out throughout the months. Okay. But then I, I chunk those things. I chunk those specific bills, but I still write, okay, here's the averages. Here's what I know that this is what's going to come out throughout the year. I need to set a parameter of how much I need to create in revenue to fulfill my lifestyle. What we're always solving for, we're solving for cash flow that can replace the lifestyle that you have on a consistent monthly basis. That doesn't switch, that doesn't change. You try to keep that the same throughout the years as you grow and grow and grow. And then you're gonna create firewalls to allow you to go from each uh, peak point in your business so you can keep scaling, keep going up. I don't know if this is gonna work for everyone. I'm testing this out. It has worked for me very well. The last few years so i'm i'm adding in little things to it making little tweaks but these are the averages this is more of a realistic number where i took the average over the last three years of my revenue so here are my revenues in 2019 2020 2021 you take the three divide by three you average that number i took that number and here's the numbers that you get here but then i lowballed it and I technically operate out of here, right? So I overestimated quite a bit. And even in this number of expenses, I'm overestimating. Okay. What ends up happening is I have a net cash flow anywhere from 120 grand to 170,000 per year, every single year in net free cash flow. All right. What I try to do with my expenses, I try to literally account for everything, right? Anything and everything that leaves your checking account checking accounts are expenses right so when you add the number up my total cost per year outgoing 
189,264 upwards of 200 grand, right? Is what is going out personal and business. Okay. With that, my first firewall position, this is where my number one firewall, whatever I bring in, this is literally by the sale, each and every product or service, each and every dollar that lands into my checking account from all the different streams of incomes that I have, I immediately remove 40% off the top. So I have it set up in my business where I accumulate all the digital products and services I sell. So my courses, my coaching, my consulting, people pay me through PayPal and Stripe primarily. I will take, I have it set up in Stripe where it just accumulates in a month, 30 days rolling on the first of every month, I'll receive a payout, right? It'll send the money from Stripe to my checking account. So if I sell 10 manifesto programs at monthly, uh, five annuals, and I enroll three one-to-one -one coaching clients, and let's just say that amounts to 15,000 bucks. Okay. I will have that deposit on the first of every month and I do the same with my PayPal as well I don't think you can set it up in PayPal you can literally just transfer the money whenever you want as soon as it hits PayPal you can transfer it either instantaneously or over three to five business days the same can be said with Stripe as well but I don't do that I like to accumulate the revenue in a month and then I use the revenue from last month to cover next month's bills that is another firewall that i've set up for myself when you're first starting out that's not possible technically right you're making money you're spending money you're making money you're spending money eventually i got to a point in my business where i could not spend any of the revenue in the month of say january on january's bills right I'm using December's revenue to cover January's bills. So this way I can actually see in December, I made 30 grand and I know I average 15 grand a month, right? So the month of January hits, right? January 1st, I receive all the revenue from December, January 1st. So December's revenue pays January's expenses. January's revenue pays February's expenses. I can consistently see all the money that came in for December and firewall number one, 40% <sighs> off to the side. So even if I don't make what I spend in that particular month, because there's gonna be months where my expenses are 45,000, 50,000, 60,000, 25,000, because there's certain bills, tax seasons, you know, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, uh, a big investment I'm making, uh, you know, money is leaving, right? And it's going into these different assets, these different accounts. I still consider that expenses. We want to get to a point where, again, you can see what comes in for the whole entire month and have none of that revenue pay for that month's expenses. That's where you wanna to get to per personally. You do that by saving money, right? Either in your cash value, life insurance policies, your emergency uh, funds, your sinking funds, savings accounts, whatever it is. You stack up money, like they say, three to six months worth of expenses, right? And you, you stack up enough that you feel comfortable with, with for me, it was getting um, roughly six months worth of expenses. I'm at a point now where just in my cash value life insurance policies alone could cover one, almost one and a half years worth of expenses. So I have the, the safety in place, right? And I don't, again, I don't pull from the months, whatever month I'm in, whatever revenue I'm producing in that month will not get used till the following month. Firewall number one, I use last month's revenue to pay next month's bills. 
and I do that on a rolling cycle with PayPal and Stripe where I receive most of my funds from. I set it up where I just simply pay myself one time a month. I'm at that point now. You'll Ideally, you want to get to this point. It really makes life a lot easier. On top of that, here's where Velocity Banking comes in. You're taking your credit cards, personal and business, running anything and everything you can through those cards. That's buying you time, creating the window for you to get to the point where you're using last month's revenue to pay next month's expenses. Okay, firewall number one. Firewall number two, whatever I generate in a month, 40%, right? So let's see, if I make 35 grand one month, I'm taking 40% off the top, 14,000. I'll move that out of my operating business checking account and I'll move it into, say, the business reserve savings account, right? Or just a separate checking account. That money constantly gets pushed 40%, 40%, 40%, 40% each and every month, right? I'm removing those funds out of my purview, out of my vision. I don't want to see it because that 40% coming to the board here is being used for uh, 10% giving, 10% saving, 10% investing, co-vesting, 10% taxes, right? So when you take the average number, average income that I make, you get 143000 eight hundred sixty six dollars and forty cents that's money that has a purpose right thirty percent of it is growing my long-term wealth ten percent is that kind of uh because this is a fluctuating right your taxes are always fluctuating up and down different rules regulations you're trying to reduce your tax liability so i just kind of set that but that money the the tax money that i set aside is seasoning in my cash value life insurance accounts right well, it'll, it'll just season sit somewhere that it can continuously produce. I want to constantly keep the money in motion, but I also need it liquid. Should I have to tap into it? I may not have to because the cash flow might be enough to, to cover the expenses, right? So when I'm running my expenses, I'm trying to account for like everything, right? Technically this 189, accounts for taxes and giving and saving so it's like i'm doing it on top of it like it's like another firewall that i'm creating technically speaking i'm not i'm not spending um the the total number came out to three hundred thirty three thousand one hundred thirty dollars and forty i'm not spending that whatsoever i'm really technically out of pocket this amount and then in reality, I'm cash flowing 150, 200 grand. And then I'm just deciding where I want to store that gold and silver, HSA, Roth IRA, uh, real estate, um, crypto, co-vestments, giving, tithing. I'm just that's that's kind of like how how it goes. But I create these parameters because what I'm trying to solve for is another firewall is my risk. How much money can I actually risk? for new opportunities to create more cash flow. This is where a lot of you guys have businesses mess yourself up big time. You go to a conference, you go to a workshop, you go to a seminar, you make connections, you make relationships with people, right? You you do business with people, you, uh, you take on a new staff, you hire someone. Um, these are all levels of risk that you're taking with your dollars, but you're not actually measuring how much can I actually risk according to the numbers, not my personal financial profile? I don't rely on that personally. I just go back to the numbers. I know I am risk adverse. I do not care to risk a lot to gain a lot. I like to lean on guarantees because of the way my faith operates. My faith is so strong in my creator. I don't need to risk his resources for higher gains the hopes of higher gains unless i am instructed by the king by my creator and it's got to be clear instructions not no billboard sign that says go all in no 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 not no guru that tells me go all in no i need the 
the Holy Spirit direct communicating directly to me, similar to the woman with the with the oil in the pots, and she was instructed to go and borrow all the pots in the neighborhood, and that the Lord would supply her with, I think, enough enough oil for the entire year, enough revenue. She was good. Okay, that's that's the type of instruction that would cause me to risk God's resources if God himself is saying go and do this with this funds okay God it's your money my logical side of my brain says run the numbers what are your numbers what are your expenses after you've removed 40 percent of what you make and after you spent all your operation costs living costs taxes everything investing saving get everything now what is left over and so when we look at the board in my case, if I'm averaging 359,000 a year and we took the total expense number of 189 and the 143, you minus it, I get $26,535.60 is money that I can play with and risk or just blow it. I could also blow it. That's another thing that messes up a lot of entrepreneurs, us, right? You, me, us. One thing that messes you up when you start making a lot of money is you start taking the girlfriend on vacations. You take the wife on vacations, vice versa. Wife, you take your husband on a vacation. You take your boyfriend on a vacation. You go out, you party. Single people, you start paying for all the shots at, at the party, at the club. You cover people's checks. You start, oh my God, you know, I'm living in abundance. Yes, God is favor over me. Da, da, da. Okay, yes, God does have favor over you until he doesn't because you're mismanaging his resources. Uh-oh, for those of you who are not in of the faith, just logically speaking, take faith out of it, logically speaking. Again, you start making a ton of money. You start taking wife on the vacations that you never took her out on. You start taking your girlfriend on vacations. You start living a higher lifestyle. You're not factoring it into your numbers. You're not creating the expense and just having it, even though you're not spending it on a monthly basis, you're not accounting for it. So you're not seeing where that money went. If you don't account for it, you don't see it. So you miss it. And then you question, where the heck did my money go? I know I make a lot of money, but I don't have money to make this investment now or to increase my cash flow or to hire a new staff or to bring on some help. Now I'm, I'm messing myself up. So that logically speaking and spiritually speaking, the moment you mismanage anything, even if you're making a lot of money, you will lose it. It will just leave you and you'll wonder where it went. And your only reaction is to make more money. But the problem is you're not creating enough firewalls to prevent you from spending. It's like you're constantly running away from your habit. Oh, let me just create more money, create more money, create more money. But you're not running away. The, the habit that you have is catching up to you. So even if you went from making 1 million to now 5 million, you got 2.5 million of excess. Then you went and you bought a sports vehicle. A luxury vehicle a home right and it just keeps going and going and you keep messing yourself up instead of creating a firewall that allows you to buy the luxury and the houses and the boats over and over and over and over again without worry and still remain in abundance so creating those firewalls is very very key i take 40 percent off the top each and every month every single dollar hits my business account the the checking wherever money comes in because i also have money that comes in like on a weekly basis from my um other revenue streams that people just send directly right and it just hits my account because that's how i have my relationship set up with certain businesses so again i see a thousand dollars come in five thousand dollars come in ten thousand dollars come in three thousand four hundred ninety seven dollars and sixty three cents come in forty percent 40%, 40%, 40%, 40%. And I forcibly live off what's left, which is 60%. So I'm taking 40% off the top firewall. Firewall two is I take last month's revenue to pay next month's bills. Anything, I, in addition, running expenses through the credit cards to buy time in case I have an event or a, a month where the revenue from last month does not cover next month's expenses. I've got my leverage, the credit cards, line of credits, all that cash value, life insurance policies, savings accounts, reserve accounts, you name it. It comes in, it'll come back. 
So let's say one month, I took 40% off and I make nothing. This never happened before, but let's say I make nothing in one month. Well, I gotta pull the money from somewhere. I can't let my account overdraft. Well, I'll just move it. The 40% that I took off the top, I'll move what I need back to the operational account to keep things flowing. And then that next month, maybe I have a huge month and that's able to cover next month's and that current month's revenue, okay? So knowing your risk is another firewall. What risk is left over after everything has been accounted for? I've got 26,000 that I can put at risk. That's it, okay? Here's my firewall to protect that is one to 5%. I do not put no more than one to 5% of my total gross revenues per year in any new opportunities. So crypto, for example, would be, say, a new opportunity for a lot of people. Okay, I look at my revenues, I do all the numbers, da -da 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 -da, boom, risk, 26,000, right? I take the 359, I times that by 1%, whatever I get, that's how much I'm putting in crypto. If I gain a little more excitement, I learn more, I read a book, I get became more knowledgeable, I'll up it to 2%. Okay, a little more, I'll up it to three. Okay, a little more up to four, up to five. I will not breach 5% in any given year, right? So let's say I went from one to 5% in a 12 month window, stop, that's it. No matter how good the opportunity is, I have to abide by my rules. If I don't, I can run the risk of messing myself up. I do not wanna do that. So the following year, it restarts one to 5% again. And because I went from one to five in 12 months, next month, I'll just stay at five. Now. Another protocol firewall that I'll do is anywhere from two to three years of consistently sticking in the one to 5% range in any new opportunity that I engage with. The only reason why I will start to go up is only if I have somewhat of a mastery over it, trust, a team, Right? I need a team, trust, mass. I need wisdom, I need knowledge, I need information that can help me to continue to move forward. I need to be able to explain the investment, the new opportunity that I'm doing to a fifth grader. It needs to be clear so I can move forward. Right? So that's my firewall. Right? And then the other firewall in the velocity banking, you guys all know this, leverage 66%, two thirds of your debt tool when you're, when you're chunking. Right? That's typically the case or cash flow times 12, right? So when you're doing velocity banking to pay off debt, because we really haven't really covered that too much here, because I'm we're looking at a case where there's no debt, I don't have any debt. So you're taking the cash flow times 12, line of credit times 66, you have a chunk range, that is safe grounds, right? Other videos that will address that very easily, but here we're more so focusing on your operational function with your fluctuating income would you agree this is fluctuating income to go from 283 to 464 and then down to 332 that's pretty fluctuating so i feel like i have a read on this now in the last three years and i feel like i'm getting better uh so here's here's the blueprint right one two three four firewalls right and then let me write the other one regarding Last month's revenue covers next month's bills, right? You wanna get to that point. How do you get to that point? Preferably for me, once I had six months worth of expenses, I was able to feel comfortable now just simply using last month's revenue to pay next month's bills. Do the same thing, credit card churning, offsetting, Another thing I like to do is switch everything to annual, right? Any bill that I can pay up for the whole entire year and save money on that bill and run it through a credit card and get cash back rewards, that's a huge benefit, right? Puts me in a very good position. Then the money that I set aside, that 40% that I set aside, I position a large portion of that in cash value life insurance and have that money season sit and wait to be redeployed for either an asset acquisition, help me run the business. If I come short on anything, 
I can pull from the policy, cover that bill, keep things flowing, right? As I increase, increase, increase over the years, over the last three, four years, I've got two cash value life insurance policies, got one of my mother, one of my girlfriends, so technically four policies that I can tap into that's savings dollars from the 10% savings of those three, four years, right? That's off to the side. That money is seasoning and growing. If I get a month like a tax month and my revenue from last month is not able to cover that, I can either pull from the cash value, boom, or I can pull from a line of credit, pull from a credit card, cover the expense, right? Pay nothing in interest. Or I might have money just sitting in another reserve account that hasn't necessarily been deployed anywhere yet, right? Maybe I haven't invested the, the money I wanted to invest yet and I got this expense that comes up. Now, the other thing that a lot of us do not account for is inflation, right? So you can use the number 7% now because we're in 2022 and inflation's at 7%. You can go year over year with this, but essentially you take what you average spend in a month, in a year, right? For me, 15,000, 15,772. So I'll take the higher number, 15,772 times 7%. Boom, 101404 plus 15,772. My expenses should go up to 16,876.04 in just one year. That's kind of how I do it. That creates a really nice buffer. It may not be the case. Inflation might go down. Certain bills that you have don't necessarily increase at the rate of inflation, okay? It's not always the case. It's, it usually mostly shows up in your food and gas and that number is actually much higher than 7%. So it somewhat say averages out. Whatever they say on the news, the inflation rate is, at least you're accounting for something you're creating some kind of firewall to have the expectation of your expenses going up. And this is why you cannot settle, right? Once you hit said, said success of what you call success is making quarter million a year, half a million a year, a million dollars a year. Never settle on what you produce year to year. Keep reestablishing the next money goal has to be higher than where you were previously at. Firewall number, what is this? This was four, right? So we got firewall number one. I take 40% off the top, 10% giving, 10% saving, 10% invest, go vest, 10% taxes, leverage, firewall, firewall, one to 5% new opportunities, off gross revenue, four, right? One, two, three, four. Okay, so this is five. Know your risk. How do you calculate risk from a numbers perspective? not an emotion perspective, right? You add up everything, giving, saving, tithing, investing, taxes, expenses, operational costs, businesses, personal, everything, add it all up and see what's actually left over. That's what you can put at risk, right? Whatever that net number comes out to. It should be a very high number, like how mine was, right? So notice how 333 and then in 2021, I made 332. I've got no money to put at risk in that year. And that's how I also do not overestimate my, say, potential. I know I'm going to make more money. I know I have the money to, to risk, but I'm just going to choose not to do it because I'm playing a much longer game than most people. This is why a lot of our businesses fail in the first one to five, 10 years. I'm playing a 20, 40, 50, 100 year game, 20 year at minimal. I want to be operating effectively over the next 20 years at the very least. How do we do that? We need firewalls. We need, we need things that we obey in period. Opportunity comes by. Okay. It's an opportunity. God gave me five doors that I can walk through. He's not forcing me to walk through any of them. It's an opportunity. I'm looking for the most efficient opportunity for the time and place that I'm in right now. Door number three, boom. That made the more sense. Oh, didn't work. Okay. Well, it doesn't affect my system because I only risked 
26,000 to go through door number three. Door number five said, this is gonna cost 50 grand. Well, according to my firewalls, I cannot go through door number five. Door number four cost 48,000. Door number one was 35,000. Door number two was 29,000. Door number three, 20 grand. Okay, door number three it is. When you operate like this, you, you, you strip the emotion out of it. You don't let your head confuse the logical side of things. And those of you who have tons of faith, and you, oh, I, I got faith for this. I got faith for this. God said this, Ephesians this, and Genesis this, and that, that, that. Okay, that's cute. I get it. No offense. I'm not trying to offend you. Rather, I'm challenging the very precepts the thought before the thought entered your mind and then that thought became an idea now a concept now it's your whole ideology before you know it it's your whole theology and your philosophy and once it becomes your philosophy oh well god told me this and god told me that and every single voice is all of a sudden god sometimes that can mess you up look at the numbers do not allow yourself to be deceived right remember righteousness and evil dwells in both of us and all of us it it can come at any point in time temptation is always there daily renewing of the mind studying is showing thyself approved rightly dividing the word of truth you have to do that every single day rightly divide every single day that one day that you don't rightly divide bam you allow one of your firewalls to get pierced, right? It's just like someone hacking how we have firewalls on our computers and firewalls on, you know, our hard drives and different things and encryptions. You need firewalls on yourself in regards to the money that you're producing and the resources that you're managing for the Lord or if you're not of this faith for yourself, period, right? Whatever that may be. So firewall number five was inflation, right? Having that in place, very, very key. And I guess you can call this firewall number six intertwines with the one to 5% and new opportunities. I will, I will wait two to three years before I breach putting in more than 5% into that new opportunity only when I have full trust possibly a team i've just mastered it myself you know i studied the stock market i studied crypto i studied gold and silver i studied real estate or i studied e-commerce drop shipping uh social media content creation what whatever it is once i've studied it maybe i build a team around it i've got trust in it it's it's the proof is in the pudding from what the money i've already put in it's already generated say 20 percent 50%, whatever it is, that's going to allow me to, okay, breach that and go a little higher. And then that just becomes part of the 10% you're already setting aside. You're now allocating it to here. You were allocating it somewhere else. Now you're allocating it to that new opportunity, right? So that's very helpful. Firewall number seven, 10X. That has to do with the revenue that you produce. So regardless of how much money you make, whether you're making what I'm making, less than what I'm making, 10 times more than what I'm making, whatever you produced last year in revenue, times that by 10, that's your goal to make the following year. So 2021, I produced 332K in revenue. 2022, the goal is to do 3.3 right just times it by 10 add a zero 3.3 that's all you gotta do even if i fail miserably and make 500,000 1 million 2 million 400,000 that doesn't matter to me the whole point is me setting the, the goal and not getting satisfied not getting lazy i keep producing i keep you know being effective right I don't allow the numbers to limit my potential because I am the only person on this planet with my DNA, my DNA, my name, who I am.
everything that you see here there's only ever gonna be one of me after i'm gone that's it i'll never come back here that's it i'm gone right the lord calls me back in the second coming if i come whether i stay in heaven or i come back in this new glorified body i'll be a different body possibly a different version i'm not sure how that fully works out in revelation I gotta get a little more educated but the point is this body is going in the ground and will dissolve and i'll i'll go back to dust my spirit however will live eternally with the father that's different for right now i need to maximize every every single minute of my life i can't think small so again it's okay to fail miserably because the goal was so big that even if you got 10 percent of the way there 20 percent of the way there that's fantastic what's what's 25 percent at 3.3 million it's a lot of money right last firewall is you're solving for cash flow okay i'm not interested in net worth right so i will always choose cash flow over net worth right cash flow is way more effective than having a net worth of 10 million dollars that you distribute four percent out of right it is a lot easier to produce the cash flow needed to live your lifestyle than to try to accumulate the money through saving and investing right in vehicles that you know just compound itself there's nothing wrong with that i just don't rely on it it's great to have don't get me wrong it's great to have but i don't rely on it i need the cash flow right so using the example say you got 10 million dollar portfolio and you withdraw four percent to live off of for the rest of your life right that's 400 grand how long is it going to take you to accumulate 10 million dollars to withdraw 400 grand a year that's going to take a long time rather what if you just generated 750 grand a year through business and through cash flow streams right and say your expenses are 375k a year so you net 375k in cash flow right let's say everything right all your bills everything operation costs cost you 375 a year right and so you net 375k in cash flow divided by 12 you're cash flowing 31 grand a month free cash flow rather 400 grand distributed as income to you and you live off of that and let's say your cost of living is also three hundred and seventy five thousand dollars well you only got 25 grand right simple math 25 grand divided by 12 you've got two thousand dollars in free cash flow a month and that's off 10 million dollars right say you're you say you did um four hundred thousand and you net 150k from all your bills right so you're you're withdrawing from the 10 million 400 grand a year four percent right and you spend x amount of, and you're left with 150 that's only 12,500 cash flow per month it's still not bad but again how long is it going to take you to get there rather how long how short would it take you to get to just 750,000 in revenue and just do that consistently for seven to ten years rather than accumulate for 30 years you see my you catch my point so firewall number eight cash flow over net worth all right and uh what i'll do I'm writing incorrectly what i will do is i'm gonna draw out all my expenses that i have so you guys can see the guaranteed expenses the non-guaranteed expenses i'm gonna write out all the firewalls have it in a document right next to this video it'll be to the right on kajabi and you'll be able to download it and you know map things out for yourself right so with that being said hope this was really valuable we went very very deep let's reconvene let's have conversations comment let's network let's discuss this uh this is very difficult i understand it was difficult for me but once it clicked it just it stayed in motion that's it it's these are my firewalls helps me keep everything in line allows me to scale according to my obedience right have a wonderful day god bless and we'll be talking soon